In this video, we're going to talk about the equations for integrating or antideriving on the AP Physics C equation sheet. The first one they give you is the reverse power rule, and it is written like this. Summa x to the n dx equals 1 over n plus 1 x to the n plus 1, where n cannot equal, so it can't equal, negative 1. Uh, and they'll actually give you a rule to use when x is equal to negative 1. Okay, so let's do an example. Let's say you have some function, uh, f of x equals 3x uh, squared minus 2x. Then when you integrate 3x squared with respect to x, or you take the antiderivative, you would get x raised to a power of 3. And then you divide 3 by that new power, which would give you 3 over 3, or you can just leave that as 1. Uh, then the second term, uh, minus 2x, you're going to get x raised to the power of 2, and then negative 2 over 2, which you could just leave as 1. And then, of course, plus c, if you're doing an indefinite integral. Okay, let's do the next rule. Wait, actually, before we go on to the next rule, we should talk about this thing called the reverse chain rule, because it's used in the next rule given to us on the AP equation sheet. Um, but it, the reverse chain rule isn't actually given to us, so we kind of need to know what it is to, to use these new rules. Um, so remember that the chain rule can be written like this. The derivative of f with respect to x is equal to the derivative of f with respect to u times the derivative of u with respect to x. This is on the AP equation sheet. Um, and a simplest example would be a trig function. So like, let's say you knew f of x was sine of 3x. <coughs> and you wanted to write this as f equals sine of u. And u equals 3x. Does that make sense? Um, then what you would do is you would take the derivative of f with respect to u which is just going to be cosine u, and then the derivative of u with respect to x, which is just 3. Then to find the derivative df dx, you take these two and multiply them together, because the du's will cancel. Anyway, so when I do that, I would say the derivative, <coughs> sorry, the derivative of f with respect to x is cosine of u times 3, which then I would replace that u with 3x, and now I've taken the derivative using the chain rule. Now, the reverse chain rule, uh, it, it works like this. Let's say, let's say you needed to find the integral of 3 cosine 3x, which is exactly what we just did. Well, if we do this in reverse, sorry, with respect to x. If we do this in reverse, what we would do is we would say, OK, well, 3x is u. And the derivative of u with respect to x is 3. Then I'm going to do something kind of goofy and weird. I'm going to multiply both sides by dx. Then I can take a look at my original function. 3 and dx, and realize that, oh, I could replace that and instead write this as the integral of cosine u du, because du is 3 dx. And again, I replaced the 3x with u. OK, well, now if I integrate the cosine of u with respect to u, that's just going to give me sine of u. Of course, I'd have to write plus c, because I don't necessarily know what the original um, constant, or if there's a constant next to it. And when I plug in u, I get sine of 3x plus c. So this is how you do the reverse. Uh, uh, chain rule, which is often something called u substitution, where you try and find something equal to u, you take its derivative, and then you write it in this form and try and replace something up here in the original function. Okay, so again, you don't have to use 
um, the reverse chain rule or know how to use it for the equations on the AP equation sheet because what it's going to do is it's actually going to be given to you. So you're going to be given the reverse chain rule um, in the way that they write their equations. So, so let's do an example with cosine and sine. Okay, so for cosine, they give you the rule, the integral of cosine a to the x with respect to x, where a is some constant, is equal to 1 over a sine of a to the x, which makes sense because if we look back at what we just did, we started, we started here with this function, and 3 is like the a, and we divided the 3 in front by that 3, which gave us a 1 in front of sine. So if I was to do a fresh new example, then I would say, okay, let's say the integral of, oh, I don't know, how about 8 cosine 4 t? respect to t. Well, let's change that up for a second. Um, it's clear that x in my equation is t, so I should be using t as my calculus variable and doing the antiderivative. Um, and then I would think, okay, well, I can really, I can take this 8 because it's constant, and I can pull it outside of my integral and think 8 times whatever cosine 4t is. So 8 times 1 over 4, because 4 is like my a, sine of 4t, or 8 times uh, 1 fourth is just 2. So 2 sine 4t, and then I would need to write plus c if this was an indefinite integral. All right, what about sine? Well, they give us the rule for sine as the integral or antiderivative of sine ax with respect to x is equal to negative 1 over a cosine ax, which is helpful because um, it's hard to remember whether or not the derivative of sine and cosine is negative and whether or not the antiderivative of sine or sine uh, or cosine is negative. Um, but the AP equation sheet, it has this for you. So you can always look at the equation sheet and remember which one is supposed to be negative. So here the antiderivative of sine is negative cosine. And uh, let's do an example. Let's say that I had an integral of, oh, I don't know, how about 6 sine of 3. <gasps> let's use theta instead of t or x with respect to theta. So now x uh, is theta for me, and I should integrate with respect to that as a variable. And again, I can pull this 6 onto the outside because it's constant. Then I would think 6 times the antiderivative of sine 3 theta, which would be 6 times negative 1 over 3 cosine 3 theta. And then, of course, the whole thing plus c. Well, 6 times negative 1 third is the same as saying negative 2 cosine 3 theta plus c. So that's how you, that you, that's how you use that rule. The reverse chain rule is also given to you in the uh, logarithm rules for antiderivatives and integrals. So on the AP test, it will say um, the integral or antiderivative, so summa, of e a to the x dx is equal to 1 over a e to the a x. Um, so again, the reverse chain rule is applied in this equation, but you don't really need to know how. You just need to be able to use this form of the equation on the AP test. So the integral, let's do an example. How about of, oh, I don't know. Let's do 2e to the 3x dx. Um, then what you would do is you'd say a is 3. Um, and you would do, oh, you know, and I would pull this 2 out here. Okay, so 2 times 1 over a, which is 3, e to the 3 x, all plus c. Then I simplify it, and that's 2 thirds e to the 3 x plus c. Easy. Um, now, 
Sometimes you'll see the natural, this particular one where it's E, you'll see this um, log rule with a, with a negative X. So you might say, how about the integral of E to the negative 2x dx. Okay, well in this case your a is negative 2, um, and so it would just be negative 1 over 2 e to the negative 2x. You see how that works? Okay, great. Oh, plus c. Okay, the other natural log rule that they give you is a little bit weird, and again it has the reverse chain rule um, built into it, and this is going to be they write it like this, the integral of dx on top, which is kind of confusing, x plus a, is equal to the natural log of x plus a. Um, now, you might be a bit more comfortable thinking of this as summa 1 over x plus a dx. That's probably how you would see it when you were working with everything. Um, and also know that you could have a is just zero. Um, in fact, let's do that as our first example. Let's say you're asked to integrate um, 2 over x with respect to x. Then what I would do is I would rewrite this, and I would pull the 2 outside because it's constant. Here, I'll write that equals like that. Um, and then I would have 1 over x dx. Now again, remember, the reason why we can't use the reverse power rule here uh, is if you recall, the reverse, power rule, the reverse power rule does not work when n is equal to negative 1. And in this problem, here, I could write this as x um, to the negative 1, and n would be negative 1. So we don't want to do that. Instead, we want to use this log rule. Um, okay, yeah, so, so what I would do here is I would say a is 0, because it's like saying um, <laughs> over x plus 0. And I would just write 2 times ln of x, or, you know, 2 ln x. Okay, so that's how you would use this if there was no uh, constant being added to a. If there was, um, then you would just follow the equation the way that it looks. Let's, let's do an example of that. So let's say you had the integral of how about 10 dx over x plus 2. Um, and maybe you would want to rewrite that and put the 10 on the outside and then do 1 over x plus 2 dx. I'm always more comfortable writing it like that. Okay, well then 2 is my a, and so I would be doing 10 times um, 1, I'm sorry, ln of x plus 2. And that's it. So that would give you 10 ln x plus 2. Pretty easy. Okay, so these are the indefinite integral um, or antiderivative rules of that are given to you. And actually, I forgot. Hold on. Plus c, plus c, because these are all indefinite integrals. Um, so these are the integral antiderivative rules that are given to you on the AP equation sheet and how to use um, them with a couple of example problems. Remember, the reverse chain rule is not something that you need to memorize or, or really be able to use. Um, I just wanted to make sure that you knew where all of these A's uh, and things were at least kind of coming from. At some point in the calculus class, you would uh, go a bit more in-depth with how this works for certain integrals. But for now, you're just a super smart person that has access to these equations. I'll take a p-test, and that's why you're going to do awesome and get a 5 and go on and be super famous and rich and have a happy life, and it's going to be awesome. Okay, great. This video is done.